everyone, it's Carrie. I'm sorry it's been so long, but I'm back and trying out a new YouTube schedule, so I hope you'll join me. In this video, I'm working on one of my Rococo style dolls as Alice in Wonderland. And I've done a few Alice in Wonderlands before. I'm showing some photos of my previous Alice in Wonderland dolls. I did some Rococo style, I did some from the movies, and this was my first one that I ever did as Alice in Wonderland in my tattered fairy style. And I've also done a Bly Blythe doll. If you've been following me a while, you know I love the Rococo style and I've done a lot of characters in it. So let's get started on this one. I'll be working on the costume and then the face up and then the final photos at the end, so stay tuned for that. I'm using a pattern that I believe this is in the patterns that are in my, for my, if you're a supporter over on Patreon, there's a uh, 2021 and before the older library of rewards and there should be patterns in there and I believe this is in there if not maybe I'll work on a new pattern set for you guys so I'll be cutting I cut up out of this blue fabric uh, the little pieces for the bodice and I'm just ironing down the parts that are going to be like the edges and since my stitches tend to be uneven I'm I'm using some uh, iron-on like tape, fusion tape for some of those edges and then stitching up the connecting sides. I'm opening up those opening up the inner seams with a, t some tweezers <laughs> because it's so tiny and then ironing those out just for a cleaner seam now for some of the spots that I want to iron it's really hard to get into those areas with an iron so I'm using these rubber there I think they're from Mod Podge they're just like rubber thimbles and I'm putting this the bodice over that thimble so I can iron those edges a little bit easier it worked okay if you do this please be very careful I tend to burn myself very badly all the time I sprayed it with some water to try to get it a little bit uh, better ironing but here's that tape I was talking about it's just like a fuse fusion tape or tapes for I think it was called like stitch witchery uh, lots of different brands and, and different names for it, but it's basically just like a glue tape that you iron on. And I like to use this a lot on my hems. trying to get all those little edges to lay down nicely. That glue is pretty much reworkable, so I like it for that reason as well. Okay, so I connected all the pieces and now I'm doing these little puffy sleeves. These I didn't have a pattern for, I just kind of cut out a rectangle shape and made it a little bit a wider than her arm so I could give her some puffy sleeves. I first made the little pleat at the shoulder and sewed that on so it wouldn't move and then I attached it to the rest of the bodice. Once I attached those then I just had a um, I made the skirt just using a big running I wanted it to be really puffy so it was essentially just like a long rectangle and I gathered it up and then left a slit in the back that I could snap closed 
So I'm getting started on the face up here, but before I get too far into it, I wanted to share with you guys something new that I launched on Etsy. It's my beginner guide to doll repainting. It's a printable step-by-step -step learning module and it's only $5 for immediate download. It walks through the steps of sealing, building shapes, adding color and shading, and final touches with tips along the way, and a full beginner supply list. So if you're a learner who likes to have things printed out and next to you as you're working, this is something that might be helpful to you. So it's available now in my Etsy shop and the link is in the description box below. So back to the face up, I'm using a Laguna Blue and as you know if you're a Monster High person, her skin is a little bit grayish in some of the dolls and some of them are a little bit blue. This one had more of a grayish tone. I wanted to bring out some more peachy tones to her face and uh, kind of make her look like a storybook Alice. So I'm adding some of this uh, I think it's called burnt sienna tint and it's just like a peachy color along with some white pan pastel and mixing that in all over her face and then I'm using some shades of blue and the peach kind of mixing them together a little bit and adding some shadows to around her eyes. I'm also using a little bit of yellow around her nose. And then going in with some of this, this is also pan pastel, but it's a peachy or a pink color that I hand mixed using some reds and magenta and white and peach colors. I'm just working slowly going back and forth with that pastel to make sure that the uh, upper lip is even on both sides and just working on the shape. I'm also just holding it back and looking at it making sure it's what I want it to look like. So I've already given her a few layers of white on the eyes and lined the upper lash line with a light brown pencil, but now I'm going to go ahead and solidify that shape with some black watercolor pencil. Just darkening up the upper lash line. And then I carry that down into the bottom lash. And again, going back and forth, just looking, holding it back and looking at it, making sure that it's the right size, shape, and, and everything, one little step at a time. I'm switching over to a brown Faber-Castell Art Grip. It's one of my favorite pencils for very fine lines and doing that waterline and tear duct lining. Back to the lips, I'm using a red uh, Derwent watercolor pencil to shape the outline. Sometimes I give it a, hard, a, a sharp lining of the lips and sometimes I don't, but this one I, I want it to be look like red lipstick, so I'm darkening that in. Try to be real careful because I don't want to change the shape that I developed on her lips. Sometimes the more you work, the more you change the actual vision of your shape. And then I often go in with a Q-tip to blend that pencil out. I'm going with a darker shade and just making some, adding some depth to the corners and adding some line details. I'm erasing the bottom a little bit because I darkened it up too much. I wanted there to be a highlight on the bottom lip. And then I'm going back in with some white so I can blend that in. So 
So I'm using some sandpaper to do some sharpening. When I want it super sharp, that really helps. And I'm just adding the line detail to the lips. Then coming back with some black and very sharpened pencil and lining the outer corners. Going back in with some tiny detail brushes and I'm trying to do some uh, lining or um, very fine shading. Now I'm taking a round brush that I've cut down and dipped it in some yellow, I think it's like yellow ochre maybe, but it's this, a close color to the hair and I'm making her some yellow eyebrows and using a micro eraser to shape them and then adding the individual hairs with watercolor pencil. So now I'm going in with a darker color, very sharp pencil, and adding more of the la uh, eyebrow lines. Now here I'm taking some brown pencil and I'm actually doing some shading on the eyeball itself, making it look more of a round shape. And now I'm going in with a white Derwent watercolor pencil and giving her some highlights around the eyes. Just like to get her tear duct to pop out and her little cupid's bow. And now shaping the iris. So I'm starting out shaping it with blue and then coloring it in with that same blue going back and forth to make sure the shape and size are the same. I'm giving her sort of a side eye. I didn't like the shape there so I erased it and started over. So I just wanted to make sure that that eye was looking in the right direction. Looking a little bit better now and then I'll color it in. Or not. I guess I didn't look like the shape of that one either. <laughs> I have to use some reference photos for when I'm drawing a doll eyes looking to the side because it is a little bit odd the way that they kind of glance over. One eye doesn't look the same as the other as far as positioning. So I colored it in with blue and now I'm blending it out with that white. So 
So as I color in the irises, I just, I tend to like to make the, the upper part of the eye a little bit darker than the lower part or more saturated because the eye is going to have a shadow caused by the upper lid. So I like to leave the lower part of the iris a lighter color, blend it out more with the white. So it's more of a highlight. Sorry for my hair in that photo. <laughs> Doing a little more shading to the eyeball to make it more round. And blending that out with white as well. I'm going in with an X-Acto knife. That um, helps in areas that I don't want to take an eraser to because it's so tiny. So it really can lift up a little tiny bit of the color. So I didn't like the shape of the iris as it got up to where the eyelid was. And so I took an X-Acto knife and sort of scraped off what I had drawn. Works great in a very small area. Now I'm going back with some terracotta, just coloring in some of that waterline. Just doing some extra detail work, giving her some blush. And then finally in with the pupils. So just making sure that those pupils are the right shape and then I'll add some highlight with some white paint. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the final photos. Um, by the way, I recently shifted some priorities to allow more time for YouTube videos. So I hope to bring you some more regularly scheduled programming. Some of them will be dolls I've made and never posted the videos and others will be brand new dolls I'm currently working on starting with my video next week which will be the new collab I did with my patrons and the theme is 80s punk so you won't want to miss that one. And just a reminder to check out the beginner step by step $5 printable guide available in my Etsy shop. The class is over on Skillshare for more visual learning and my Patreon for close up clips and tutorials monthly. All of those links are in the description box below. You can also follow my work on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. So all of those links are down below as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.